Who is the more valuable ball defender? Is it Jermod McCoy at cornerback or James Pierce at edge rusher? Caleb, what say you, sir? As right now, the voting is about 70% to McCoy, which nobody would have predicted in the preseason. Yes, uh, 70% of our fans are smart. That's crazy. Come on. Having covered Tennessee for a long time, and having been a Titans fan, by the way, I'm not all too familiar uh, up close and personal with what a lockdown corner can do and the type of difference they can make on a team. So I'm really seeing it for the first time. I mean, the closest Tennessee the Vols ever had, Dave, was Dwayne Goodrich in 99, but they ran so many zone blitz schemes that you didn't really, no, no cornerback really locked down a side of the field under Chavis during that year. And then Jabari Greer, I guess, would have been 2003, was probably a really good one too, close to a lockdown corner. But this is the first time I've seen a true lockdown corner playing man coverage for 60 minutes. It changes everything about how you can scheme your defense. I've never seen what they can this before. One of the biggest examples of this is Will Brooks. Look, I, I hate to use the cliche phrases, but he has a walk on. I hate to do the Jim Rad, all that that we talk about, but I don't know if Will Brooks could be playing on the field right now if there wasn't Jermon McCoy to take away half the field and then they could scheme Will Brooks the way they want to. Okay, and but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that Dominique Bailey is not a household name in Tennessee fans. Uh, houses, living rooms, if it's not for James Pierce. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that Tyree West has half the production, if not for James Pierce. I think this is a case of recency bias, and I don't think you're factoring in the impact that Pierce has on an offense that has to constantly think about him, because we saw it against Florida. We saw the strip on the goal line if that play doesn't happen i'm not sure that florida doesn't end up winning that game it felt like they had all the momentum so while i see what you're saying and defensively it makes you better just like deon sanders who was the best lockdown corner of all time and it's not even close sorry daryl green but jermod mccoy you can stay away from from him now, that obviously gives your defense advantages in other areas, but with James Pierce, you can't really stay away from him. And when you try, it makes somebody else that much better. I don't know that Jermod McCoy's play makes anybody more productive on defense. I just think they're playing well as an entire unit, whereas I think Pierce's play makes other people like Tyree West and Dominique Bailey more impactful. We want your votes on the poll question and then uh, tell me why I'm right or wrong. Hit that like and subscribe button. Caleb, uh, defend your Jermod McCoy as best you can. Okay, so there's a few things here um, that we have to unpack. One, uh, I actually agree with you about Dominic Bailey and Tyree West. I think James Pierce does impact. And I think we both, I think you and I are both, what we're saying, we're not trying to disparage the other one. Because they're both incredible. But I think, one, you bring up the James Pierce force fumble. That was incredible. Javon McCoy had the greatest fourth down pass breakup I've ever seen in Tennessee football history uh, in that same game. I have yeah. never seen a cornerback be able to close on a receiver like he did on that fourth down pass, jump in front of the play to knock the ball down, and not even make contact with the receiver. Dave, do you know how – I mean, you, you cover football. Isn't that one of the hardest, most impossible things to do for a cornerback in that sure. play? Sure, and I thought too that I thought that his interception showed something of his natural instincts. Because the first thing I said when he picked it off is, "Don't leave the end zone." I don't know about you, but I was like, "Down it, down it, down it!" And he brought it out, and he ended up approximately the other forty. So um, that that's his aggressive instincts, which I love. I do love that. But I think Pierce does a lot more for you well, from an entire defensive standpoint. There's another layer here. If Pierce were to go down, look, Pierce does a lot. He does affect the defense. But if Pierce were to go down, Dave, you would still say the defensive the defensive line for Tennessee would be playing B plus football, right? Yes, but I think Ricky Gibson is really good at corners, so I don't think they would take a massive fall off if Jermod uh, McCoy. Oh, I think they would. 
I think they would. I think I, I don't think Ricky Gibson is bad, but Dave, you, you've covered football a long time, and you know that number two corners can look pretty good until they're asked to cover the number one guy, and then they don't look so good anymore. And I think that would happen to Ricky Gibson. Um, There's some truth of that. There's yeah. some truth of that. Ken says so, the balls are so deep at defensive line they can still get pressure without yes. fears. It would not exactly. Be nearly, it would not be nearly as easy. And also, by the way, look, I'm going to say it, and I know he ran into the punter. The only reason they're equally good. The only reason Pierce is starting over Jordan Ross is because of seniority. But Jordan Ross is as good. And I'm telling you guys that right now. So if Pierce went down, Jordan Ross could do the same thing. We've seen Joshua Josephs do similar things when they give Pierce a break um, every other drive. Tennessee, Tennessee has three to four elite, elite edge rushers right now. Pierce is just the best of them. Jermon McCoy goes down. All of a sudden, Ricky Gibson is going to start getting cooked all the time because they're going to put him on the number one cornerback. Everybody's going to be questioning why Will Brooks is out there because he's just not fast enough to cover that much of the field. Okay, he's fast enough to cover a much shortened version of the field. I think I I, I think you can... It's, it's crazy. Again, I'm watching this for the first time in my life, guys. I never really was an Arizona Cardinals fan, so I never got to see Patrick Peterson. I watched him some at LSU, but I've never seen this before. They put Jamal McCoy on an island, and they literally roll everybody else to the other side. Everybody. And they're like, nope, you can, hand you can handle this by yourself. And I, I, I didn't believe that whole lockdown island thing, Revis Island. And I'm watching it now. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That really makes a difference. It's huge. More than even an edge rusher to me to a certain degree. And so I'm going... I'm 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 going Jermon McCoy's more important also just because there's nobody to replace Jermon McCoy. Now nobody's gonna be as good as James Pierce, but are you telling me other players can't be as effective as James similarly effective to James Pierce? Not to that level. I mean, when he turns it on, when he's got the quarterback in his sights from the standpoint of Tennessee has the lead. Um, and that's what this let's don't forget that's what this defense was designed to do, right? Is go after a quarterback because Tennessee had the lead. That's exactly I mean, what Tennessee's were offense about. was a little bit better, and Nico was a little bit more mature in his uh progression. Then you would be talking about a defense that would lead the college football nation in, in sacks. I, I believe that they have not had many opportunities to just come with their ears pinned back. Against against quality opponents. No, they haven't. They haven't. And that's why they've had to roll James Pierce to the inside on stunts to stop the run all the time. By the way, that coach that said James Pierce is a liability against the run needs to be fired. I want to know his name because, guys, whoever if, if he is your coach, you should be upset. He's a He doesn't know football. Okay. You're referring to that athletic story, and we talked about it. In retrospect, I'm not sure it was worth talking about. And that's no offense to the writer, David Ubbin, who did it. I, I thought he did a great job, but I just felt like there were a lot of lies in there. I felt there were a lot of things said to prop up people – um uh general ursus says will brooks deserves a scholarship he has more than proved himself brooks made a shoestring tackle in milro and he actually saved two touchdowns against alabama then had the interception he absolutely sucked the life out of north carolina state but let's clarify this and i'm glad this came up you can still call him a walk-on but it's not like back in the day because you have nil money he's his family's not stroking a check for his tuition no they're not and I'll, also again i'm not i'm with you guys i love the way will books plays i think he but but because andre tarantine is a is is, is barely a par of safety i mean he's he's borderline subpar right will brooks no andre tarantine oh tarantine yes he's yes average because tarantine is just average and because Boo Carter is still young and not always in position at the nickel spot, Will Brooks would not be able to have the freedom to do what he's able to do if Jermon McCoy weren't doing what he were on the outside. Because the truth is, Will Brooks is not, he's not Deion Grant, okay guys? He's not some elite free safety that can play center field and just cover a huge portion of the field. He can't do that. And if there wasn't a lockdown corner, he'd be asked to do that. And that would be a problem. He fits in this system. That's not to say that he's not valuable. I guess the best comparison from a reverse way, Dave, is you remember when uh, Richard Sherman was getting all that hype as an elite lockdown corner, and then he went to San Francisco without Earl Thomas behind him, and we saw what he looks like without that? Yeah. It, and, and, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I think Jermon McCoy – look, I, I, I agree with it, – it, we're. I'm not trying to disparage James Pierce. I think James Pierce is still the best – 
one of the, the these are the two best draft prospects on Tennessee right now. Can we agree with that? Okay, how about this? Bank on it, James Pierce will go higher in the NFL draft than Jermod McCoy, brought to you by Commercial Bank. Commercial Bank is your neighborhood bank. What makes us different from other banks? We understand that every customer has unique opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. We don't expect you to fit into the same box as the next person or business. Whether it's purchasing a home, saving for your child's future, or planning for your next vacation, we're with you every step of the way to navigate life's big decisions. Commercial Bank. Who gets drafted higher in the NFL draft, McCoy or Pierce? Pierce, because NFL GMs are stupid and they don't know how to evaluate quarterbacks. Oh my quarterbacks. Gosh, what a sidestep cop out.